Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Danny Christine, and yes, I know that my nails are a disaster. I've been at home for two months and I am not a nail tech. Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Danny Christine. I am a childcare business owner, consultant, and wannabe lifestyle content creator here on YouTube. And you could really help me out with that by scrolling down and clicking that subscribe button. We are currently at the end of Teacher Appreciation Week. Today is Thursday, May 7th, 2020. So in my childcare business, we have been celebrating and acknowledging Teachers Appreciation Week since Monday. Does anybody else that's a teacher out there kind of feel like, why do we have to share Teacher Appreciation Week with Nurse Appreciation Week? And no shade to nurses, obviously, especially now more than ever, nurses must be appreciated. But couldn't we like move Teacher Appreciation Week to like next week or something? I don't know. And then on top of that, tomorrow is specifically National Child Care Provider Day. So I feel like I forget that there is a day specific to child care providers every single year because it kind of is overlooked a lot. Um, so I just found out that tomorrow, May 8th, is National Child Care Provider Day for this year and um, because of that I felt this is a great time to make this kind of video. But a lot of states are reopened already and it's kind of crazy to think about what the new normal is going to be. And if you're in one of those states or areas that have reopened, leave in the comment section below how that is impacting you. And if you do own a childcare business or you do provide childcare in your home, how has that changed the way that you operate. I did post a series of videos about how I have changed the operations within my center over the past couple of months and I'll leave those linked down below. This video is brought to you by childcaresites.com. I do have several series of video courses listed on childcaresites.com. If you are starting up your childcare business or if you're having difficulties growing within the beginning stages, those courses would be great for you and you can access them by going to childcaresites.com slash courses and I will leave that link in the description. So with it being Teachers Appreciation Week and tomorrow being Child Care Provider Day and with states lifting their stay at home orders and some child care programs that have been closed might be reopening soon or are reopening now i wanted to kind of share some leadership strategies that are definitely going to be essential now more than ever in order to see success and continued growth within your child care business my first tip is that communication is key. You're probably not going to be successful and not get your kids back that have been home this whole time or even get your staff back on board without efficiently and clearly communicating certain things to them specifically about how you plan to keep them safe. Your communication should be clear, it should be professional, and it should be as proactive as possible rather than reactive. And what I mean by that is you should have plans in place to make sure that everyone understands what is going to take place if certain things happen. So you might not ever have a positive COVID-19 case within your building, but if you did, what are you gonna do? You shouldn't wait until it happens to then communicate to families and to your teachers about, okay, I'm, we're gonna close down for a day or we're gonna close down for a week and do this, this, and this, and you're rushing at the last minute or you're stuck because you don't know what to do. Think about it now. Think about if I open my doors today and tomorrow there's a COVID-19 case, what am I going to do? 
and whatever you plan you should probably get some help from your team or the closest person you trust um, you should also seek guidance from your local health department and the CDC if your local health department can't help you. Look at the CDC website and I will link that below as well. Tons of links in the description. Look at the CDC website because they have guidance for childcare programs that are open. And it tells you what they recommend you do should a positive case appear. Take that wording and put it into some sort of action plan that you can now distribute to your families in advance. And aside from just what happens if a person gets sick, what exactly are you doing to do your best to make sure someone does not get sick? Don't wait until a parent or a teacher asks you, what are we doing about shoes or what are we doing about masks? Make sure you clearly communicate that, especially if you're going to be reopening it when you've been closed for the past two months. My second tip is to make sure you show up as a leader. Now more than ever, your team, your families, your community needs leaders. There's so much uncertainty. There's so many government officials saying, I don't know. And yes, you are allowed and should say, I don't know whenever you don't know something, but it'd be nice to have some guidance. So in whatever way you can provide guidance and leadership, do it. Consider how scared your staff might be right now especially if they've been home and you're calling them to come back to work. With that in mind, yes, it's okay to be vulnerable with them. It's okay to be transparent and honest, but it is not okay to share more than necessary. And by that, I mean like, don't gossip with them about every single thing you hear on the news that could be this or could be that. Sharing other people's opinions or other people's worries, like stick to the facts. It's not okay to over exaggerate or basically just don't scare them more than they already might be scared. Be honest, but put on a brave face if you are particularly worried. Be brave right now because you're the leader of your program and make sure you demonstrate to them just how hard you're working on your end, even if it's behind the scenes. So for my program, for example, I live in a completely different state than where my center is located. Usually I go to my center once or twice a month and I've been trying my best to go every like week and a half or so since this started. And the day that we realized in New York that oh my goodness this is serious and our county closed down all schools. I made sure I immediately went up to New York and I showed my staff that I was there and we were creating a plan. Every week I'm communicating with them about what work I'm doing here to make sure that we're doing research and staying on top of the times and we have plans on how to move forward. You should also be creating a safe space for your team to feel comfortable talking to you. A lot of people are struggling with anxiety, depression, grief. We don't know how many loved ones our employees might have lost because of coronavirus. And there's so many mental health issues that people could be going through right now. So it's important that you are aware of it, acknowledge it, and honestly keep it in mind because you are trusting your team to work directly with children that you are liable for making sure those children are safe. So you want to make sure that you acknowledge anybody who might be struggling right now. I know that for the past couple of staff meetings that we have had, we've been having virtual staff meetings every two weeks. During those meetings, one of the very first things I do is show the New York State mental COVID-19 mental health hotline number because 
New York State has created a space for people to call in that are struggling. And I want to make sure that my team is aware of that. Maybe they don't want... I, I don't even remember how I found out about it because I don't always watch the news. But maybe they don't watch the news. Maybe they're not reading those things where that hotline number would come up. So I wanted to share that information with them and I also let them know that if you do not feel comfortable talking to a stranger, you can talk to me, you can talk to our administrative team. Um, whatever we can do to make them feel comfortable, we're trying to do. And you might wanna consider making certain policy adjustments. Speaking of policy adjustments, most providers are going to need to be flexible as we move towards hopefully the end or ending of this pandemic. For programs that have been open, like mine, just as we've had to change up our procedures, our health and safety procedures, our parent policies that are written might need to change as well. And same goes for programs that have been closed. Like what does your current written illness policy say? That definitely might need to be adjusted. Or are you gonna consider being more flexible with scheduling your students childcare sessions like we have a no daily drop-in policy i know a lot of centers do like a monday wednesday friday tuesday thursday type of thing or just daily drop-ins we don't really do that it's pretty much just full time monday through friday or you can do extended days um but I don't even want to speak this into existence because I don't like the daily drop-in type of setting. But if we must, in order to be successful and move pat and hold us over through the next couple of months, we might need to consider it. These are things that you're going to have to think about if you're trying to build your enrollment again. Because most centers and most home daycares as well have decreased enrollment right now. I did create a video a couple of months back about enrollment building tips through social media and I will link that down below if you're interested in that. But to continue on with adjustments, you might even need to consider adjusting your employee handbook or your rules with your employees. For example, your sickness policy, your paid time off policy, how many days do you give them? Are those days going to roll over into next year because they can't take a vacation this year? Be as flexible as you can possibly be with your team, especially those that have stuck by you and your business throughout this pandemic. And that leads me into showing appreciation. That's what this week is about, right? teacher appreciation. In my program, we do our best to randomly show appreciation all year round. We're constantly like buying lunch and pizza and different things. Um, we have team retreats in the summertime, which I'm dreading the fact that we are most likely not going to be able to do that this summer. But what can you do that's a little bit extra this week? Oh, now that I'm, I, I, I apologize that this video didn't come out earlier in the week because now asking that question, the week is over, Danny. I'll just rephrase. If you did celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week or if you do have an idea for next year's Teacher Appreciation Week, leave it in the comments below. What did you do or what are you going to do? Even if it is not specifically Teacher's Appreciation Week, you need to show appreciation throughout pretty much the rest of this pandemic because clearly teachers are stepping up as essential workers during this time and all essential workers for sure need to be appreciated. Being that we regularly show appreciation for our teachers like throughout the year, um, I wanted to figure out what I could do differently and more um, that might even mean a little bit more to them than just getting them lunch or anything like that. So I took it upon myself to create and generate newsletters that I could send out to my families. And this might seem like, oh my gosh, newsletters are nothing new. Everybody does them. I didn't. Um, 
it's not that I'm not capable, especially being someone that creates digital content. It's just, they're not my favorite thing to do, so I don't usually do them. And my thing is that with my Virgo-ness, I don't ever want to put out a product or a piece of content that comes from me or my company and it not be close to perfect. I wouldn't just want to type something up in a Word document like, it needs to look professional and well thought out. Um, so I took the time to figure that out before this week and I had started sending newsletters out to our families regularly um, throughout last week and I think the week before and this week I added in reminders that this week is Teachers Appreciation Week and I wanted our families to know it, to acknowledge it, and I gave them options of ways that they could show their appreciation for their child's teacher. Because I feel like if we can hardly remember when Teacher Appreciation Week is or Child Care Provider Day, um, parents might not know as well. So I've been sending out reminders, giving them some ideas, and for the first time, we have seen our parents responding in ways that are showing appreciation for the teachers that they probably wouldn't have done if I didn't remind them that this is something that exists. Our teachers are working on the front lines right now. Could you please do this for us? I asked them to send in videos. I let them know that if they'd like to sponsor a lunch or may have their child make a card and drop it off and all three of those things happened. We had a family, a mother and a child who the child has not been with us in the program for the past two months, stopped by with a handmade card. Another family sent in videos. Another family brought in lunch and snacks for the teachers. It was great. And to pay that forward, those good deeds forward, with tomorrow, May 8th, 2020, being National Child Care Provider Day, I wanted to do something special for you child care providers out there or those of you that are aspiring to be child care providers. And that is if you book a consultation with me within the next week, I will give you all three of my video course series listed on childcaresites.com for free. So that would be a savings of over $40. If you are someone that has been interested in purchasing those courses and booking a consultation with me, obviously this is a great value. Instead of having to pay for both, you could just book a consultation and I will send you the courses as soon as you book and anything that you did not learn from those courses, you can have that time to ask me one-on-one -on -one in a individual private video consultation for 45 minutes. You can book that consultation by going to childcaresites.com slash Danny Christine. This is a limited time offer. It's only within the next seven days from the posting of this video. Uh, so I'll make sure I put all the details and links and everything in the description of this video. So be sure to check out the description for more information. That is it for this video, you guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Danny Christine Consulting if you are not already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.